Kelly McHenry, and I'm a librarian here. And um, the library has a weekly series on, called Conversations on Social Issues. And we, in that series, we draw on the collective wisdom of the students and the faculty at Seattle Central to share with the rest of the community an issue that they care about. Um, as you might know, in the library there are many different viewpoints and there will be things in our library collection that all of us in here could disagree with and other things that we agree with. And so our lecture, our, our conversation series is also a reflection of that, that we will have issues and we will agree to agree. Um, in a respectful way and have respectful conversations around disagreements. So I invite you, if you have an issue, we love to have student presentations and students leading the conversation. I am putting together the schedule for winter quarter at this time, so come and see me. My name is Kelly. And it's now my great pleasure to introduce Sharon. Sharon Spence Wilcox, she is my dear colleague, also a librarian, and she's speaking today on the movement to restore social skills. So let's welcome Sharon. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. I am really glad that you're here, and um, a little bit off, but we'll make it through this afternoon. My hope is that as the, in these next few minutes, well, till what, 12.50, we will have a chance to not only hear my voice, but we will be able to hear your voices as well. Because I'm wanting to make this a true conversation among all of us. So, get your vocal cords warmed up. It's not just me. Um, I have, I want to start with a few guiding questions on civility. And in the next few minutes, we're going to think about what does it mean? Um, and how is that a social issue? What causes rudeness? How does it affect us? Are there any solutions? What about cyberspace? And self-expression? And where do we go with all of this? So that's the plan for the next 50 minutes. First off, we just want to hear a little music and think about silence. So with that music, silence, kind of a, they don't go together, but let's see what this does. If my little mouse and they cooperate. Oh, there. Uh, space, I'm either going to retreat and not work with you at all, it's, so the silence will get louder. That's one interpretation. And then the other interpretation is that the silence, I'm going to fight back, and I'm going to get right back in your face, even crazier than you got into mine. So that's kind of a context for this whole civility talk. Um, how do we respond when people get 
into our silent spaces. Let's define it. What is civility? What does civility mean to you? I'd like to hear your voices. When you hear the word civility, what words come to mind? Respect. Respect. Kindness. Kindness. Polite. Honest. Honest. Golden rule. Golden rule. Everybody know what the golden rule is? No? Would you share that, Stacy? Treat others as you would wish to be treated. That's it. Treat others as you wish to be treated. Thank you. Anything else? Civility. What does that mean? What were you expecting here when you heard civility? Okay. Well, we have politeness. We have respect, honesty. Civility is really something that's pretty complex because Civility to me, my civility may not be your civility, right? And so it can be a complex issue to work with. All of these things that you've said are basically good. They all have good inherent in them. And like some of you also mentioned, civility is about courtesy. It's about politeness. It's about good manners. So that's the basics. That's like the big picture of civility. And we're going to delve deeper into it. Um, the two book covers I have here are um, the civil, Choosing Civility and The Civility Solution. They're written by P.M. Forney. He's a professor at a university on the East Coast, and he's like the godfather of civility, <laughs> okay? And he's done a lot of research and writing. They have a civility research institute over there, and that's where I've gotten a lot of influence on this topic. I've been doing a bit of reading from his work and from other people too. So that's where I'm coming from. So we're gonna get more into this. And first we wanna make sure that everybody understands why it's a social issue. This is why I think it's a social issue. It's a social issue because social means it's about people connecting, right? And each of us interacts with other human beings every day. No action that we have is gonna be without consequences. It's either good consequences, something great happens, or something not so great happens. But there's consequences. And civility means you think about what those consequences are going to be. Um, the better quality of interaction we have, the better our lives are, right? If you have good, positive interactions, then you don't usually have lots of headaches and stress. So that's why I'm thinking it's a social issue, something we need to pay attention to and to be aware of. So there's good interactions which make you feel great, and then there's the interactions that make you want to, well, let's have a little, I'm going to do a little video clip which shows some of the negative interactions. And I have to say there's a disclaimer. There's going to be some words in here that are not civil, OK? <laughs> It, let's try again for this to work. And this video clip, I'll do a little plug for the library. This is one of the videos in our Films on Demand collection. So you two can watch videos all day, all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get this started. Oh, make it big. You see it? Can you just hang on for a sec? We're all in a hurry. We're all apparently late for something. And is everyone on the phone? They really should be back in cars. But how many times a day do you look at someone and shake your head and think, how could that person possibly be so thoughtless, so clueless, so inconsiderate, so rude? <laughs> to drive while they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Manners, civility, or etiquette, I think it's gone missing. Like, I mean, I'm talking, if you cut in front of me, like, waiting for a bus, uh, and, like, waiting at a convenience store, anything, I can't, it, it drives me nuts. <laughs> Ooh, it gets me going. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Just look at what people post on 
exist on the internet. What are the rules of behavior? Do people not know or do they not care? Everyone has a pet peeve. Parents actually phone their coaches who are on the bench during the middle of a hockey game to offer their unsolicited advice. People are just barging through, people stopping in front of you. Someone, you know, has a cold and they just decide to cough right in your face. Gum chewing. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> We all look at and talk about other people's manners, but I'm not as polite as my mother was. I've been known to swear. I've talked on my cell phone in a store, and my kids are good, but they've got different standards. Am I getting older, or am I on to something? Okay, we'll stop there. So, what do you guys think? Any of those scenes look familiar to you? You felt that? Yeah? Yes. I was just going to say that I thought, relative to my life experience, uh -huh. if that's as bad as it gets, we have a pleasant century indeed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So we'll. I'm going to want to hear about your. You want to want to share? Oh. At this point, any Perhaps incidents? at the end. At the end. Okay. <laughs> okay. Was there another? Yeah. I think she's right that it's generational mm -hmm. in terms of the the, the limit or the. Because I look at gum chewing, like he's like, like gum chew chewing gum. That's funny. Yeah. That's so mild. Yeah. We're, we're, I want to talk a little bit about the de the generational thing, the differences there, and also the places. So depending on where you grew up, <coughs> things are different. They're different norms. But first, quickly, just let's think about this. Why are people rude? Why do you think that there's this behavior happening? And I have a few items I'm going to list. I want you to think, is this a major cause, or a minor cause, or not a cause at all? OK? So first one, people are stressed out. Yes. Major cause? <laughs> OK. Parents just don't teach manners. Minor? Yeah, minor. Yeah? OK. I think it's pretty major. You think it's I major? Think that we, I think that we're created by our parents. We become the, I mean, we're really, that's where we get our entire personality from until the age of 10 when we begin to take our peers. So I think it's a very you think that's a big important factor. I don't think it's a matter of teaching as it is a matter of role modeling. Possibly. Yeah, so role models are going to, the way the parents act, that's just how the kids learn. That's how you be. That's how you're supposed to be. What, what, what I yeah. meant by that yeah. was yeah. that parents make parents do teach manners to their children, but it's not it's the fact that those chil children turn around and are, are rude it has more to do with their stressful and frustrated lives than it has to do with the parents not having taught them. And then, oh, were you going to say yeah, something? Yeah, I was going to say I think it's somewhere in between. Okay. They teach them, but then there's, there are other adults. So the parents tell them, the parents show them, and then you're saying there's this other world out there that messes with that. So yeah, which comes to negative role models. <laughs> Is that a major cause? Yeah. Yeah. Most people think that's a pretty, pretty big cause of um, being rude. Yeah. What's on the TV? What's on the internet? The movies? It's just that's how all changed. Things seem to be just more in your face. I know I tell my kids just because the kids on that show on whatever Disney Channel talk to their parents like that, don't mean you get to talk to me like that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what about uh, just a declining sense of community? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's like, we don't, we don't know each other. We, we're not friends. Not, you don't even have to be friends, but just know that we're all in this thing together. There's times when people do come together, when there's a disaster usually. That's when all of a sudden, okay, I'm in trouble, this person's in trouble. Let me be human again. 
Okay, let's all work together. But in regular times, it's just like every man for himself or every woman for herself. And the last one, declining morals and values. Do you think that's a big deal or not so much? <laughs> Not so, some, okay, so let's, here, talk about that. Some say, I'm going to call on you instead. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I think, think it's a danger because it's, it's like what the one person said, that your personal experiences in life, you, you sort of, um, th those are what you learn to value. And I think that if your parents are not starting out teaching you that, um, you don't value that. <coughs> and you will get feedback from peers if you're rude when you go to preschool or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's different from really understanding why it's important. True. Mm -hmm. And so the morals come from the parents, that's what you're saying. Any other comments on that, Althea? I think that, I think that that's true. I also think that, you know, I, I, I think that who, who, is, who is treated right, that definition is changing. And in some ways, I feel like that we are trying, we are, as a society, trying to invest more people with a sense of the right to be treated well. And I think that's actually changing for the better over time. When I think about, you know, maybe 50 years ago when um, discrimination was taken as totally against women, against racial and ethnic minorities, was totally acceptable by like, folks in white society or male society. I think that's actually getting a little bit better. There, there are some changes for the better, but I, I feel like there's also, there's, we're going down, you know. Yeah. Um, I also noticed that what can look like rudeness could just be a cultural difference. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. all of that kind of has to be um, taken into consideration. I agree. You had a comment over to Um, I mean, I, I find that, um, I mean, maybe it goes back to what civility is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I tend to think that civility is choosing, it's a society finding like the ideal like within the society and trying to attain that ideal. Like as a group, what's the best idea that everyone can come up with? And I think that getting there, there's a lot of changes mm -hmm. and such as globalization, for example, I think is an excellent example to understand it. Like what can look like declining morals and values I think can be an integration of such different different ideas, such as having, a, you know, I mean, a democratic world where the class system is going away, and mm -hmm. a bunch of different things. So I think okay. that's. I, I don't know that it's necessarily declining, as it's just changing it's so very rapidly that yeah. everything is switching. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. That's a good way to look at it. A different perspective. Um, so, we talk about why people are rude. Let me show you what the survey says. And I don't know if you, can you guys read all of this? It's kind of hard. But basically, most people, and this is a survey that was conducted by the public agenda, the folks at public agenda. And it is a little bit dated. It's 2002. But it's a survey on rudeness in America. And 84% feel that it's the parents who are failing to teach respect. 62% um, feel values and morality are on the decline. And then 60% feel it's the negative role models in society. So that's what how it shook out back then. And as we're hearing from this conversation today, it, it's still kind of those are in the top area. Maybe not the declining morale, the values and morality, but the parents playing a role and certainly the role models, the negative role models in our society are a big part of this. And then there are a few others, if you care to, I can share the slides and you can read those at your leisure. But we're going to move on because I'm thinking about solution now. Here's one possible one. Do you think please and thank you are going to help yes. at all? Yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. Talk, say more. <laughs> Well, I, I think that, I still think they're magic words, I think when somebody, um, instead of demanding something, 
request something with the cookies, it's a whole lot different feeling. And a thank you, um, whether it's immediate, which is absolutely ideal, even if it comes three months later, is always, I think it's a spiritual practice to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I just know I respond better when people tell me, when people say thank you or mm -hmm. uh, hello. Or, you know, I respond to it much more than to say, where's my test? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel like a person, maybe? <laughs> Yes, Denise. And I think for myself, if I make a point to say please and thank you, it's like a self-check that if my words might seem a little harsh, if I can add please, I'm giving a pause. And you know, it's for me too to, to try to get a message across that I'm not being as harsh as the words may sound when I'm giving orders to students. At <laughs> you hear that, students? <laughs> She's trying. I say it with sugar, with sugar coating. Oh well, sorry, my secret's out. <laughs> I think the magic words only insofar as it, when they are genuine acknowledgments of the humanity of the other person. Mm -hmm. I think like I've heard those words said in ways that make me feel like less of a person. You know what I mean? But like, but when you say thank you because you recognize how that person has played a role in your life and your community, then I think it's really transformative. Right, genuineness, the tone of voice, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I have a son that I teen most, and he has started to talk in English, and when he's demanding all the time, and he jolly me, and I say, I don't know what he wants, and I say, Max, send me the word, say, what is the word that you need to say? He say, please. <laughs> so so he, he's like struggling, yes. trying to figure out how to express yes. himself, but and you, you he help him. To come and then say, please. please. And he feels in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so that so you're saying just do using the word please as a way to bring yes, your, center yourself and figure out this is a better way to communicate with somebody yes. else. Yes. Okay. Yes, I like it. it is very cultural though. I spend a lot of time in India and although please is sometimes used in formal language like in signs like please don't park here. When people talk to each other, I almost never hear that word. Could be a word for please. And they're they they're just, happy with they each just, other. They're still. They, did, yeah. <laughs> how do I, they just hey, how do I get to X? You know, and mm. no, thank you either. What about people? Anybody else here from a different culture, country, want to share your experience with using the words please? And thank you. I know some of you are from other countries. <laughs> I recognize you. <laughs> no? Maybe later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm kind of curious myself, to yeah. tell the truth. So you want to push them? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. She's going to push you. <laughs> please, remember. Please. Because I know how I use please and thank you, and I don't always necessarily expect it from other people, but I know that thank you when I'm really upset, like when I was lost the other day and this policeman gave me directions, I made a point to say thank you. And that was a way to soften myself also. So those words, I know the words have an effect on me even when I say them. So, but I think from other countries, especially I teach ESL, and I'm not giving all these strong lessons to say please and thank you to people, because I know it's different in other cultures. So how do you say please and thank you in other cultures? And do you say it? Or do you expect your children to be saying it? You know, like that. Yes, go ahead. I grew up in Hawaii, but neither of my parents was American. As a result, I personally have always felt about as close to the fine dividing line between, shall we say, domestic and foreign, mm -hmm. as I think in English it's possible to feel. And my opinion, at any rate, has always been, when in Rome, <coughs> do as the Romans. So I've spent a very great deal of time, personally, uh, studying the manners of everyone else because I can think of no greater gift to give someone than first-hand knowledge of how properly to behave. Thank you for that. That's, that's important, I think, is to do 
what to recognize who you are with and to respect them by following their patterns of behavior, their norms. Um, the other thing, when you asked that question, Denise, I was thinking maybe the students who are from other countries, because they're not familiar with using that, please and thank you, maybe another way to say that is how do you acknowledge someone's kindness, rather than saying thank you. So is there anyone here who would want to volunteer that? If, if somebody does something good for you, how do you respond to that? It, with words? J thank you, is that it? Yeah? Okay, well let's move oh, right on. Here we have oh. oh yes. Hi, hi. Hi. I'm Sergal, I'm from Mongolia. I am my first part. Welcome. And it's like, uh, we tell uh, thank you and please for others. So, but others don't really like respond as like, thank you and please. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, uh, my teacher said, please do me your homework <laughs> and I feel more comfortable and more like, it's more proud of me. Like, oh, she said me please, and she said me thank you. So it put me more comfortable and so good. I really love it. Like Americans, they just say please. So have you shared that with your family in Mongolia? Yeah. <laughs> no. And how you, how it made you feel? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I'm going to move on to another of the issues at hand, which is just how most people in America feel about civility being a problem. And 95% of them, of us, that's who we are too, right? 95% of us believe that civility is a big problem in the U.S. And this is from a survey that is more recent. This is a Civility in America 2013 survey. What about you? <laughs> you think um, civility is a big problem? That, that big? If I was to ask for a show of hands right now, how many would raise their hand to say civility is a major problem? Oh my. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's move to this question then. How does this damage us? How does incivility, how does rudeness damage us? What does it do to us? Since it's a problem, that means it does something negative for us. I think it breaks out of our ability to connect with others. With others? And I think that, you know, the lack of community and the lack of connection comes from there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not able to see um, how we can connect or our compassion towards others, then we don't see. And I think that affects us. It, it does. I, I'm going to put a few pieces up here that specifically what it does to you internally um, with your relationships because it makes you more stressful usually when somebody messes with you the hackles get high <laughs> right? or when they blow their horn at you it can erode your self-esteem when somebody is rude to you you can feel like well i'm not worth it i'm not i don't have anything to offer um, it can also make your relationships go downhill, relationships at work, relationships at home, relationships in the classroom, right? All of that, you, similar to what you were saying, Carolina, it's like, if you don't, if somebody's continually rude or disrespectful, disrespectful to you, then you're not going to want to reach out and hold, well, hold hands, <laughs> but, to become a partner with them, to share with them. You don't feel comfortable, safe to do that. Um, talk about it poisons the workplace. Remember that guy in the, the clip who threw the computer? I haven't made it to that. And I hope I never do. <laughs> oh my goodness, I never will, please. No, it will never get that crazy. Take a walk around the block. Going outside for fresh air, that's always a great solution, <laughs> okay? And then the last one, it escalates into violence. I mean, think about what's been in the news lately, okay? All these cases where this guy, the, kid, the kid's at the gas station and they're playing the music and then 
Turn down your music. Ow, oh, ow, oh, dead. I mean, that's the ultimate. Is that how we want to be? What's going on? So it really is, when you think about the, the extent to which incivility can affect us, you do realize it is a huge problem. Uh, let's, let's put ourselves to work now. We're gonna talk about those fuzzy norms, those things where you're not quite sure. Anybody recognize that? The bus, who takes the bus in here? Yeah, a great place to see civility or incivility at work, right? So, here is the scenario. The bus is full and all the seats are taken and it's after work, it's like, maybe 5 o'clock, 5.30, you're sitting on the bus. You see a woman, let's make sure I get this right. A woman walks on, gets on the bus, and she has a walker. She has gray hair, and she has a walker. Do you give up your seat? Yes. Yeah. Yes? OK. Different scenario. Woman with gray hair in a business suit with running shoes. Do you give up your seat? No? She's my age, I believe. So because she's wearing a business suit and doesn't have a walker, you tend not to give up your seat. Is that? And the running shoes. And the running shoes? Okay. All right. What about if it was a gray haired man? with bunches of packages in his arms. Would you give up your seat? Yeah. I'd ask. Yeah, you'd ask? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. there's that community. <laughs> yes, <laughs> talking to people. I've okay. offered my seat to people and they said no. Well, that was the next thing I was, well, what would you do if you get, if you get on the bus and a 15 year old offers you their seat? How would that make you feel? Oh, oh. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. You'd feel great? Yeah, I do. Wow. All right. It makes me feel wonderful. Oh. I'm very respectful. Yeah. Uh -huh. I actually wouldn't feel bad at all because oh. I would feel like this is great. Somebody's being respectful right. of my age. Even if I don't feel old, I'm just thinking that it's good that they're expressing I could say no, thank you. So is it? But the thing is, so the norm <coughs> for all these years, it's been you show respect to the older people, right? Yes. Person, she said that she's not going to take if she offers if somebody offers the seat and it's polite and it's ability to say no. Oh. So I always acknowledge uh, with appreciation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 then for my own self-esteem, I have to feel like I'm not. I know, perfect. I know. But then if, if, if I offer and you tell me no, and I say okay, maybe next time I am going. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I usually add on a pedestal, like oh, I sit all day. I, I don't mind standing right now. <laughs> so you would explain. Thank you. Yes. And that's a big part of it, I think, is for us to talk to each other and just you know we're we're. we're just treat each other like a, a, a real person and not just no, and that's it. Because then you're left with all these assumptions, like what did I do wrong? What, what, what's, yes. That's another fuzzy norm, the yeah. yes, no question. We learn yes, no questions, but in reality, when we say no, the polite, we, we give a reason. Mm -hmm. We don't just say no, no. We say no, no, or whatever, we give a reason. An yeah, we offer an explanation. Mm -hmm. so, that's a fuzzy norm about yes, no questions and gratitude. And gratitude. And gratitude. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Where I'm going with this is that I, I, all this reading I've been doing. Basically, what people are saying is that um, the norm is what they're suggesting the norm should be is that if there's somebody who appears to need the seat more than you do, then you offer it, and you can ask them. It looks like you have a lot of packages. Would you like to take the seat so you can rest your arms? And there again, you're explaining why and 
being aware of somebody's comfort, trying to make somebody else more comfortable, as, or as comfortable as you. Let's put it that way. So that's, that's what, let's see, one of the books here, Civility, Manners, this one, by Stephen Carter. That's his take on this deal, is civility is about making others as comfortable as you are in that moment in time. I think that would require people to have to get off their cell phones. Oh, mm -hmm. hey. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Up next, <laughs> cyber <laughs> civility. <laughs> of people surveyed think the internet encourages uncivil behavior. And in this little place, I, I can't even read it, sorry guys. 34% um, who expect civility to worsen blame Twitter arise from 2012. But that's internet, but cell phone I think is kind of intertwined with that. It's like gizmo, I have another world to be in. And I don't have to worry about this world that's right here present little world in this little box. That's all I need to worry about. That is, to me, that, that, that's one of my pet peeves, talk about pet peeves, is when people are so absorbed in that thing that they're not giving me the attention that I think I deserve. Yes? How ever did you manage, if you don't mind my asking, to domesticate your peeves so well to turn it to a pet? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's one of the pets. I have some other ones that are wild. <laughs> They're running around in the backyard. <laughs> I like that. Oh, okay. okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why civility in cyberspace is such a big deal. And I think one person alluded to it a few minutes ago, and that was this thing, an anonymity. And I don't know, have, have you all seen this cartoon? Take a second to look at this cartoon. It says, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Are, are you okay? And this thing has been around for over 20 years. But it still rings true. Because when you're sitting in that space, behind that screen, you feel like you can just be anything. You, it's like no holds barred. How many of you read news, newspapers online or read blogs? And how many of you read through all those comments that come below? How do those make you feel? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel when I read a lot of them. Because it, feel, it seems like people just feel like it's, it's licensed to just be mean and cruel as ever. Yes? Forgive me, but I thought to ask as well, if I may, what precisely is breeding? Um, creating. <laughs> creating. Thanks. Okay. The, the breeds, that's what, yeah. Yeah, some sites are shutting down or turning off their comments section after articles for that reason. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the way people respond. Yeah. I actually think that's very wise, though. I mean, it's do you think in some ways that because of everyone feeling as if they have an opinion, and let's say for a news article or whatnot, is it really like I as a lay person know anything at all about the issue that's being talked about in that article? And how is my opinion on that necessarily a, part of the, a valid part of the discussion if I don't really know anything? So maybe that's like, I would think that in some ways that some of the rudeness would come from a great ignorance on the subject merely just wanting to say whatever is on your mind in order to be able to be a place in the world. So I think some of it is like that, yes. Where it's just, here's a forum where I can blast. 
I can just give everybody what's inside of me. I can just be all that I want to be, right? That's what. But but how is that helping the article? How is it helping the community of readers? Is it really offering something new, offering something positive to that story? That's my concern. I think that's what you're mm -hmm. suggesting as well. Yes. Some of the website and the comments, uh, they are logged in by the Facebook account. So you can see who, who is the person exactly mm -hmm. with, with the picture. Yeah. So uh, how would that be interpreted? Well, you can see who they are, and that just means that they really don't care to hide. So it's not anonymous in that case, but it sort I guess the point is anonymity can be something that contributes to letting it go, no holds barred. But other, some people are just like, I have a voice, I have an opinion, and I'm going to put it out there. And damned if you like it, I don't care, I just want to share, I want to give the world what's on my mind. It's like, I can't, I don't have a box that I can put up, I don't have a stage I can stand on and get somebody to pay me to do a, spe a speech. But I have the internet, and I have my little gizmo, I have a Facebook account, so I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to tell you all, give you my opinion, and I don't care if it hurts anybody or not. Okay. So it's some people hide behind the internet, some don't. They don't care. They just put it out there. But yeah. That's a double-edged sword, because if you create a trail of negativity online, it may come back to haunt you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You are identifiable. Mm -hmm. You go to apply for a job, and your employer can see that you're a rude person. I mean, you can find out a lot about people on just by doing a Google search, or, or a lot of there are other websites where you can investigate their online presence in, in different ways. So, mm -hmm. be very careful. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, Maybe this is sort of a, a broadening of the term anonymity. Maybe it really doesn't relate exactly to anonymity. But to, to go back to what you were saying, um, whether the person's picture shows, you know, whether you can identify the person or not, if it's online, it has that, in my opinion, that kind of anonymity. What it means is to me is that the person, there's this, this loss of community, this loss of connection with other human beings. So whether you can be identified or not, it's putting it out there in that way online so that nobody can respond to I mean, yes, somebody can write another comment, but, but there's not really a connection with two people. It's not a conversation between people. It's not a connection. And that's why I think a lot of people do it, because it's, I can put it out there, I can say whatever I please, and I don't really care what anybody says back, because I'm not sitting in the room with them. And, it makes a difference when you're sitting in a room with a person, yeah. when you can see their face, when you can see their eyes, when you realize this is another human being, who, and you can read body language. And just All of that, I think, makes a huge difference when you're communicating, especially when you're communicating about issues that are kind of trigger, triggered topics. It helps to be in the same space. Yes, your turn. Uh, I think you know people today they um, they spend hours and hours on the internet, social network, and uh, as time goes by, they, they become lack of social skills and also they become uh, less responsible. And they're like uh, they don't know how to talk face to face. It's like they prefer to talk you know, online. Mm -hmm. When they come to uh, somebody, they don't know what to say. Uh, they like lack of social skills. I I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, especially with the younger people. Again, I'm returning to my children as the example. Um, any other comments about the cyber civility? Uh, no, not about cyber. Okay. But, uh, I did have a, a question or concept I just wanted to uh, throw out. Yes. I don't have a definite answer to it myself, but uh, I thought maybe it would relate to your topic. Uh, what, how should one be uh, or try to be or whether one should try to be civil when confronting injustice. Uh, one example which is very moving to me was one of the Eyes on the Prize films uh, showing a, uh, a very young, intelligent, good-looking, about 16-year-old black boy in Birmingham 
uh, it was a network news clip talking to Commissioner Bull Connor, the chief of police in Birmingham. And he was reasoning it absolutely. Not. He must have had some sort of like nonviolent or pacifist king, king type principles in mind. But he was trying to reason with Connor and uh, you know, doing a beautiful job marshalling his arguments and getting nowhere with Connor, who was just. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he, you know, he held his own in his way uh, and you know, didn't get anywhere. So you know. And that is actually one of the. <laughs> Well, I was gonna. I had this little my way, Frank Sinatra, but we'll just jump over Frank and move on to this one. Solution: Standing firm in the face of injustice, in the face of rudeness. How do you keep? Oh, some. There are some who say there are naysayers who believe that being civil means that you give up your right to express yourself, to have an opinion. It's like the new political correctness is civility. But I'm, from what I've read and from what my experience is, it doesn't have to be this thing that shuts you off. I believe that like Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi, you can, you can stand up for what you believe in. It's not, it's not that you don't get to say what you believe, but the way that you present it, the way that you share it with other people. That's what's important. And yes, like you said, there, is, there are going to be times when you're speaking to this wall, <laughs> but you don't take yourself and become, you know, join them. Don't lower yourself to that level. You maintain your dignity. And if it means you're going to go to jail, then you go to jail for what you believe in, speaking your truth. Yes? Well, you have those examples up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. They read a summary of the letters that he wrote all those years that he was in jail, yeah. and he, um, in prison, and he, um, he's such an eloquent example of presence of mind. Mm -hmm. And he influenced people who started out meeting him because he had such a presence, a presence of love. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any other comments about having to stifle yourself because you want to be kind? Yes. Um, I do think that there is something in, I mean, I agree with you that it doesn't necessarily have to shut you off right. to have a civility, but I do think that there is something when everything is so completely correct, if everyone is so far into that box, then if you have an opinion that's outside, outside of that mm -hmm. anyway, then just trigger words will stop the conversation. Yeah. And I think that that breeds racism very much and prejudice. I mean, I found that I'm unable to have certain discussions with people just because certain things come up where I'm in no way expressing what it is that they think I am, but just because I have, there's a word that's used that is a totally innocuous word in every way, mm -hmm. but something about it, it like it's outside the box. So and maybe I think that their, that's the danger. Their experience with that word, say, is not a positive experience. So it's like a trigger word for them. Exactly. Yeah. And that, I mean, if, if, for example, if you have a different generation, if, if I would be unable to have a conversation about race with my grandmother who grew up in the South mm -hmm. because everything she would say would be seen as racist mm -hmm. from my perspective. And so that would entirely destroy generational like, conversation. Where is it, how is that generational conversation not more important than her expression of what her life was and what that world was, which I will have no experience of because I didn't grow up in that world. And that doesn't exist anymore. Right. That's gone. I've had a few of those conversations with my mother-in-law. Yeah. So where it's, it, it, um, it gets so contentious that we just finally have to say, we're going to have to agree to disagree. I acknowledge what you feel, what you, your experience, but this is where I'm coming from, and we're not ever going to agree. So let's move on. But you understand, I mean, I, doesn't that also, do, that those declining morals and values, mm -hmm. you see how 
it's not as much the case as we once thought it was. Right. It's it's just that the world is changing. We're we're opening up more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. I just thought I'd add that perhaps this particular juncture, so well represented by the lady, is the very starting point of art, like poetry. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's a limit to where certain things may be said, mm -hmm. and where discussions cannot be had, because the living are being privileged over the dead. Mm -hmm. One might, from that point onward, speak particularly beautifully, or paint certain things. So that no one, because all of us who are young now will be older by the minute, um, might despair of anyone's silence, because where one must remain silent, one becometh an artist. Can I say something? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I have been thinking about this for some time. We have to look at morality and civility very on the position of power that one has. The relationship is going to depend on that. What the downtrodden masses, uh, the unjustly treated uh, groups in our society, because whatever they do is going to be considered immoral, uncivil, and it becomes very complex. So who, who decides? So who decides what morality is? Who decides what civility is? Yes. So it's, it's, it's uh, I, I like the solutions. I like mm -hmm. the ideas, the problems that we are encountering in our society. But yet, the inherent system dictates such as the civility and morality is what they believe in. So, when the inherent system is such that, even we, if we come up with solutions, are they going to be implemented? Yes. So it's a, it's a very complex issue. It, it is complex. The There's civility on the level of one-on-one one -on -one relationships, and then there's the civility societal relationship. Then there's the, you know, the, the country, <laughs> you know, the government. The privileged, there are, and that's why in the beginning I said it, it's a complex issue. I want, I'm, I'm about out of time, but you don't get to jump up and run out the door. <laughs> you, you get to stay. And well, what I'd love for, to hear from you, maybe not now, but there is a web page where you can share comments. I would love to hear, um, not the rude kind, I see you over there. <laughs> No offense taken? No, not okay. at all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I would love to hear, what do you think, do you think that we would need to do something on our campus? I was also influenced, the reason I'm talking about civility, I was at a conference last fall, and I was hearing about a campaign at the Oregon State University campus, where they were trying to help to establish norms for their space in terms of things like take responsibility for your actions, respect differences, be inclusive, keep shared spaces clean, keep your headphones low, you know, don't, so little things like that. But as we've found out, there's some norms that we take for granted and others don't are not even aware of. So a lot of the behavior that we think is rude comes from a place where people just don't recognize that this is the way it's supposed to be. So this is just something to think about. Would we think that this is a campaign or this is something that we could work on here at our campus to try and help our entire community just recognize, establish some norms, because I'm not going to say like the as you just said today, I don't want to be the one dictating this is the way it should be. I want all of us to come together and decide what will make us all most comfortable and present an environment where we can all be successful in our studies, successful in our work. 
That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm proposing. Do we set up a campaign for that? So if you want to comment on that, um, Kelly, you have information about the website, right? Or it's on the library's yeah. webpage. There's a link to the COSI series, and there will be a place where you can share your ideas. Or you can talk to me in person. I love that. Okay? And I'm in the library all the time. Come back again. We have something every week. Next Thursday is homelessness, community-based education, and the benefits of mentoring. So 12 o'clock, this room, every Thursday. And thank you again, Sharon. It was a pleasure. Thanks for your participation. That really means a lot to me. Thank you.